evening and welcome to the Stratford Festival lobby where I have the great pleasure of being here with Brian Bedford who is um, uh, a hero to all of us here at the festival. He's been here for n quite a few years and uh, how many years Brian? I don't know. <laughs> I think, uh, I, I really don't know. Maybe 27, 28, uh, something like that. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, my name is Anthony Cimolino. I'm the general director here at the festival and uh, I uh, uh, over uh, the, the span of those years, I uh, had the great pleasure of seeing Brian in so many wonderful parts and working with him uh, too infrequently and then <laughs> getting to watch him direct and act and uh, he did a beautiful Lear both as a production and as the king two seasons ago. Yes. Yes, yeah. Yes. And this year, you're all things wild. You are getting to uh, once again reprise the uh, performance you gave a few years ago, reading the letters of Oscar Wilde and the correspondence every year's yes. Oscar. Yes, when we did the Wild celebration. Celebration. What were we celebrating? His the centenary of his birth or his yeah. death or something. Yeah, we did a a little Oscar Wilde festival right. within our festival. Uh, which is when this show that Anthony's talking about evolved. And what it is, is the story of Oscar Wilde's amazing life told through his letters. And I didn't compile it. Uh, a man called Peter Wilde, strangely enough, did. And so I can say quite truthfully that it's a very, very interesting show. I love doing it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's absolutely fascinating. You see a side of Oscar Wilde that you never, ever see. And it's uh, it's it's quite quite a marvelous show. I've done it I've done it a lot, and uh, but uh, and you do it very well, and it's very evocative to, to, to as his life changes and you the relationship with uh, with that young man Bozy. Uh, Bozy it's mm. just chilling. It's you mm. know as all that comes mm. apart. Mm. Well, there are two Oscar Wildes, and of course, my show covers both yeah. both the, the the two one before he went into prison when he was absolutely la creme de la creme in London, Paris, everywhere. Uh, and then, of course, his terrible downfall. And then there's the after prison life, which is uh, very, very sad indeed. Uh, but something happened to Oscar and something deepened him and something made him more humane and less egotistical right. and, uh, and, and, and you know it's a case of uh, you know really really awful experiences being turned into a kind of gold f for a person's personal resources, yeah. and this is what happens to it. Anyway, I hope you'll see this. And what show. an incredible change. I mean, this oh, man had, story. you know, uh, what, two plays in the West End at the same time, both of them major hits, and uh, mm -hmm. and then when he received that sentence, of course, mm -hmm. um, which was not just prison, but was hard labor. He That's was at right. a treadmill, and it was basically a death sentence. I mean, people Absolutely. did not survive Absolutely. after a year or two, and he, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, that change Mm. For him, I mean, how horrible to mm. go from being the toast of mm. really the whole of Europe yeah. to being a pariah yeah. and someone they really were trying to kill. Uh, well, the sad thing is he brought it all on himself, right? as you, as you know. And, uh, but he thought he was, uh, you know, he, he was, uh, he was, you know, the biggest star in the world at that time and he thought he was invulnerable. Right. And he learned a big lesson. Yes, that <laughs> things can change very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah even yeah. to the most celebrated mm. individual. The pity is that he didn't <clears throat> write after prison because he was, a, as I say, he was so, he was a much more, he was a much more resourceful, much more uh, soulful person. Uh, well, then. we have four plays. I mean, we should have had another exactly. 20, 30. Exactly. And you're right, they would have been mm. much better plays. Yes. Even yes. though mm. the importance of being earnest, which Brian is directing and playing Lady Bracknell, God <laughs> bless you, <laughs> God in this bless season, you. Um, is a work of genius. Mm. It's, it's an abstract, brilliant mm. thing. Mm. It's, it's indefinable, really, what it is. 
uh, people have written an awful lot about the play, the importance of being earnest, and uh, you you can't you can't get it down to a description because it defies all description. And the re the truth of the matter is, it is so tied up with Oscar Wilde's own personality and own his own character. And, and we all, uh, we all in the play, uh, us characters in the play, we all play different elements of his own hmm. personality. The same as in uh, in uh, Noel Coward plays. You're all right. you're all you're little bits of Noel, Noel Coward, <laughs> you know. And uh, but uh, I'm having a fascinating time with this play. I was never actually a huge fan of the play. Wow. And uh, you know, I, 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 I think it can very easily be tiresome, the play. Just kind of a litany of aphorisms, and you think, oh, please, give us a break. And, you, and you, get, you get ahead of him in, you know, with his devices. Uh, but I've, now that I know the play a lot better, I see it quite differently, and I've got a, I've got a marvelous cast, and they've taught me so much about this play. Hmm. And uh, I, I, it's a very elusive style, but but but, uh, and of course it's a satire. It's a satire on the high society of Oscar Wilde's day, uh, the aristocracy and the upper classes and everything. Uh, and so what we found is that you can't satirize a satire, that you have to be absolutely serious mm. and as dimensional, dimensional in it as in a, you know, as a, in, in, in a play by Chekhov or something. Right. You have to absolutely, utterly believe it. Uh, uh, and, the, uh, and, and, and Oscar Wilde takes care of, of, of the everything satire. else, right? And it's an it's one of the funniest plays, and one of the wittiest plays that's ever been written. I, I would think. Well, Brian, in addition to having a marvelous cast, you have a marvelous designer in Desmond Healy, yes. who's worked with you on yes. this. You've done many beautiful productions yes. together. Well, as you know, because you were there, when we had our, uh, we were trying to find something for me to do this season. I wasn't here last season, the, the season before, and the last thing that I did here was the part of King Lear. So naturally, uh, uh, you know, an obvious follow-up would be Lady Bracknell. Uh, I'm, wh how, what do you play after you've played King Lear? Lady Bracknell. And so uh, Des McEnough and Anthony and I were on the phone and uh, it was Mackinough who suggested, uh, yes. remember reading yeah. all those plays, yeah. Yeah. we read about 14 plays, uh, 17th, 18th century plays, 19th century plays, and then Des said, why don't you do uh, Lady Bracknell in, in, in The Importance of Being Earnest? And at first I didn't think it was a terrifically good idea, then I thought about it and read it a couple of times and saw what a brilliant part it was, and I saw excitement in the play too and then we had another conversation and uh, I said yes uh, uh, of course I'd love to do it and then the next thing was Des McEnough said and do you think you can get Desmond Healy to uh, to design and we did and you did yeah now yeah. so Desmond Healy has done a beautiful job of this production it's being built right now he's doing both sets and costumes yeah and we have a clip where I have a bit of an interview with uh, Desmond, so let's watch this. Please send us, we have your questions here. I just want to say, Brian, that many people have written, uh, who are watching, saying welcome back to you. Ah. Uh, so, all right. Here's a, a brief clip with Desmond Healy, and then we'll come back and answer your questions with Brian Bedford. <laughs> 